the future is here. And settling nicely into the classrooms of Trinidad and Tobago. Indeed, it is a future that engages the minds of young people in ways that have begun to change the dynamics of education in this twin island Caribbean nation. The digital era has arrived and it's one that excites today the leaders of tomorrow preparing them with a different learning landscape than existed when simple teaching tools like chalk and talk were the norms. Starting with a laptop for all first formers, the government of Kamala Pasad Bisesa is committed to taking the gadgetry to higher levels, feeding the thirst for knowledge with a diet that scientifically positions the student population for a rapidly changing technological world. The wisdom of laptopping vividly displayed its proud characteristics at the recently held Virtual Educa Symposium in Port of Spain. Young and older ones, the students immersed themselves in what looked like a silicon setting where familiar and futuristic electronics dazzled their little eyes and captured their inquisitive imagination. I think this, what you're doing here is wonderful and you know it engages our, our teens to know more, know, know more about technology and I recommend that they do more of this because it's, it's extraordinary. The art of non-linear video production attracted these young ladies from St. Augustine Girls High School. As a student from their brother institution, Hillview College, gave them a practical demonstration. What I was showing them was how to use Autodesk Maya. It's a program um, that was put online by AutoCAD and they can use it to create different 3D animations. So I was taking them through the basic steps, how to create an object, assign a different color, and then how to animate the object itself. Admittedly, the limitless possibilities of electronic classroom boards and remote access of teachers' lesson plans excited the teachers as much as it piqued the interests of the students. It's exciting. I really like the idea that you can get to touch and move and play and interact. They are seeing them to be great for, wow, it's limitless. The more engaging we can get our students, the more we are going to get from them. We use different software the Ministry would have given us in terms of the synchronous eyes and so on. So when we went to the Samsung booth, the girls were very excited. We want a virtual classroom. You know, um, so we, we at school do implement ICT into our program. It's a paradigm shift in classroom management and engagement of students, as Dr. Maria Byron, and a method that could heal some of the social problems within the education fraternity. Every presentation spoke to the need to move away from the traditional models. And those traditional models, if you remember in that paradigm, the key was having students do things based on what others wanted them to do. Today we're saying, and we have all the jargon, student-centered, learner-centered, active, participative, constructivist, and it's all coming back down to the key word, student engagement. The electronic classroom boards have already entered the system on an experimental basis. The Clark Road Sanatan Dharma Mahasabha Hindu Primary School in Penal has the first of two smart classrooms. I must commend the ministry that they have taken this opportunity to share this with, with the children of Trinidad and Tobago. The students are actively involved in drawing, writing, touching, 
And with the high-speed internet access, they have access to a, a wealth of information. Uh, I would say literally at the tip of the students' fingertips. At Presentation College in Chaguanas, where another board forms part of the research project, IT expert says the Samsung school concept offers greater individual attention and it is less time consuming. This will aid teachers when they give their coursework assessments. Right? They don't have to spend two hours, three hours grading papers, marking papers. This software will do it automatically for certain formats of tests like multiple choice, true and false, short response, it will be able to grade it instantly. And you can get your answers, you can get your results, you will know exactly where in your lesson you have to spend more time and where you can move on. It is better teacher-student interaction and I find it is easier to, to learn and I find I get my marks and stuff easier. I am very anxious to see what the next steps for this kind of technology will be for the classroom. I think it makes teaching for the teachers and learning for students much easier than it was before. It's um, innovative, it's a better teacher-student interaction as my colleague said earlier. Um, it's actually very, very a better learning experience for the children. The Honorable Prime Minister in her promise to the nation leading up to the general election of 2010, we had put forward on the manifesto the question of human capital development for sustainable development. And then it was one of the seven interconnected pillars was the question of ICT and the connectivity within the population and ICT in education as well. And from day one, she had also promised to give the students entering into secondary school one laptop per child. And uh, we have delivered in that for the last four years, we have given close to 75,000 laptops to students and who would be now in Form 1 to Form 4. We give to or close to 5,000 teachers, primary school principals, secondary school principals, school supervisors. Together we trained close to 4,000 to 5,000 teachers on uh, ICT skills and knowledge at different levels. And so, and then in addition to that, we ensure that all 134 secondary schools have computer labs ranging some from one to six, and some of the labs have up to 60 computers and more than 300 primary schools have computers, uh, computer labs, and we're working to com complete 100, 176 more primary schools before September comes on. But the rollout plan does not stop here. Virtual Educar, which is celebrating its 15th anniversary, is particularly pleased with the organization and successful execution of the symposium here in Trinidad and Tobago. Its Director General, Jose Maria Anton, says plans are ahead for the setting up of a regional center that will link classrooms across the hemisphere. In each country of the Caribbean, we are going to have a virtual educa uh, 21st century classroom. That means the following. And let me explain a little bit. Um, you have a classroom of every kind, but you need a classroom, experimental classroom, where you have all this technology. And then you bring the kids and show the parents that, that they are looking that those kids are not playing, are studying and learning in new ways that makes necessary 21st century. Yes. And then the teachers will also lose the, you know, the, the, the problem they have with using technology became more relaxed and use all those materials. If you have one of those classrooms that are showcases, in each country, and you have one person in charge of the classroom, pedagogy, skills, and they, you make a network, and you relate that to Latin America, and you work on that. Uh, you are making something. This morning, Minister of Education, Trian Tobago, and uh, the Deputy Secretary General of the U.S. announced that in three months, we are going to have the plan paper. In six months, we'll have the whole thing running. The Organization of American States, which partners with Virtual Educa, is giving its unequivocal support to these initiatives. 
Assistant Secretary General Ambassador Albert Randin says the OAS will continue to endorse the smart classroom construct because of its intrinsic value to economic development and global positioning. For us, it's critical that we have citizens who are responsible, who have a job, who can make a living for themselves, but also citizens who can take economies to the next level of development. We cannot progress by continuing with the same kind of uh, approach. Uh, I'm very happy that Trinidad and Tobago is, is, is flourishing in that sense as a leader in the Caribbean and certainly also in the, in the Americas in terms of taking initiative. Uh, we cannot keep talking about it. Somebody has to start doing it. It's only then, and the OAS will support always this initiative because for us it's important that we maintain demo democratic governance, democratic institutions, a high degree of um, uh, observing human rights, but also creating jobs, making sure that people have an income, built a life for themselves, and look towards the future. Samsung Technologies, which built the two experimental classrooms in Trinidad, has pledged its continuing assistance in creating the regional networking center. Samsung is willing to support and provide Samsung's hardware devices, as well as Samsung's software know-how and knowledge in this smart school project. I think this is a great opportunity for us to understand what smart school project in the future is very important in the education field. I'm definitely sure this is one of great stepping stones to build up the next future education system. Several other global corporate sponsors partnered with the Ministry of Education in Trinidad and Tobago to ensure a successful symposium with simultaneous workshops conducted by local and international experts. Among the beneficiaries, Latin American practitioners and regional ministers of education. Well, I must tell you that the first conference of this nature that I went to was the, the international one held in Medellin, Colombia last year. And coming here and seeing that this conference is on the same level with what I saw in Medellin, I'm very proud to see that one of our very own Caribbean countries can host a, a conference, an exhibition of that nature. It's very good to see how Trinidad really has the capacity to handle conferences of that nature. So and it's not something that I think I am overly surprised about because you've, you've hosted as a country conferences for heads of states. I mean, you, so it is not unheard of, but I'm very impressed with what I've seen here in Trinidad for the last two days. The Organization of American States recognizing the tremendous work that we are doing in ICT in education they uh, engaged us to see whether we'd host this second uh, virtual education workshop for Latin America and the Caribbean, but more particularly for the Caribbean, because there had been two launched in Latin America prior to this, and the last one was in Suriname last year. And we grasped the opportunity to do so, and Cabinet supported the, uh, the, the process. And so together with Virtual Educa, um, the Secretary General, together with the direct, uh, the Deputy Direc Director General of OAS made sure that we were on the right footing by engaging us for over a, a nine-month period now, culminating with these two days of the Virtual Education Conference. On display, a world of technology in a minefield of innovations, bringing the potential scientist face-to-face -face or even hand-to-hand -hand with the genius of today's men and women catering to a world far different and more challenging from the one in which they entered. It's very interesting and it's very nice to know that um, education has taken a leap and uh, in, um, really accommodating the new technologies that we have out there. I am sure children, it will really develop a lifelong love for learning as it is really relating to real life. I teach my dad this type of technology a lot at home whenever he has time. 
many other dads and moms will indeed benefit from the talents of their boys and girls who are the recipients of this conviction of the government and commitment of its Ministry of Education to fulfill the sacred promise of empowering the student population with a package of educational tools and state-of-the-art learning landscapes that will positively impact their future well-being. I spoke of them as the next generation. So we can't be teaching them for today, even for today's technology. Yes. Yeah? Education is, is very broad. And, and really, it, it means that if you want to build a peaceful society, a sustainable economy, an environmentally friendly society, environment, you will need to look at education from a broader perspective. Some of this stuff, it seems like it's better than our usual textbooks. And one of the companies, I think it was Fujitsu, they have like an entire program for administration. And I think that'd be easier than paper and pens. Go head to head with the Chinese or the, or the Americans, pick some niche areas and build a core of expertise around those areas. And our universities hopefully will be helping us to train people in those areas. This has been a tremendous success. Uh, we look forward to continuing working with the, the leaders in, in the practice of ICT in education. We had, and we will continue to engage them in retraining and training of our teachers, getting them into the classrooms of the schools so that the students now will have greater interaction and engagement with their teachers in the use of communication technology in the education programs. Top, top, top.